Okay, good evening, everyone. We always proceed each council <laughs> meeting with a word of prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to uh, ask Miss Isby, would you please word our prayer for us tonight? Sure, you'll bow with me. Our gracious Father, we thank you for the abundant blessings that you've given us. We just ask, Lord, for your wisdom, and we let ask, Lord, for your guidance. That we thank you, Lord, for this community you've graciously blessed us to be stewards of. And we just pray, Lord, that everything that we do will be pleasing in your sight. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll now call this meeting order. Mr. Garrett, would you please call the roll? Mr. Hawkins? Here. Crimes? Here. Mr. Pruitt? Here. Ms. Mel? Here. Mr. Ledbetter? <clears throat> it's here. Okay. Ms. Smith? Here. And Ms. Isby? Here. Mr. Jones will not make it with us tonight. He's a little bit under the weather. Uh, before we get started, I would like to um, uh, read a, a plaque that uh, the city council and, and my office has bought for uh, or bought or is giving to Chief Spradlin. As you know, Chief Spradlin uh, let me know back in January that he was planning on leaving July the 1st. And uh, Jody, uh, you've heard me say this before. You are going to be missed. Uh, you have done a tremendous job at the Conway Police Department. You've been a true leader. Uh, you've made the tough decisions, and uh, we wish you well in the future. But I'd like to read this. It says, honoring Chief Jody Spradlin for your unwavering support and unrelenting guidance. To you is entrusted the honor of the force. You served honestly, faithfully, and you never swerved from the path of duty. Thank you for 29 years of faithful service to the Conway Police Department and your com uh, commendable dedication to protect and serve. Best wishes on your retirement. Chief, we're going to miss you. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. I've still got your retirement page now. No reasons <laughs> on there, but I've still got your papers. Uh, I've already clicked the button. I'm sorry. <laughs> In council, we've also got our new police chief uh, online, William Tapley. Uh, William, uh, you uh, you had the uh, highest recommendation uh, from Chief Spradlin, which meant a tremendous uh, a lot, amount to me. And you also had a, a lot of support from the former chief, A.J. Gary. Uh, I know the council knows you, and I know they trust you. And uh, as a city, you're uh, inheriting a tremendous police department, men and women who have done an outstanding, just an outstanding job in Conway for a number of years, but especially lately. And they, uh, they will continue to do that under your guidance. But William, welcome. Uh, glad to have you. Is there anything you'd like to say briefly? Thank you. Um, you know, just having the praise from, from Chief Gary and Chief Spradlin means the world. Uh, both of them were my mentors as I was coming up through the department. So just, just to have them recommend me means more than I can say. Um, so thanks. I'm, I'm very thankful. I'm very excited uh, for the opportunity that has been given to me. Uh, I know and I've worked with most of the men and women of the police department, and uh, they're a very caring and, and conscientious group of people. They do a great job for the city. Um, Chief Spradlin's made sure that the, the police department is one of the best departments in the state. Uh, and for me to be chosen to, to take over after he leaves and lead the department is, is quite an honor. So I'm just looking forward to, to working with all of you and uh, keeping the department moving in the, in the direction that he's got it set on. Okay. Welcome aboard, William. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Council. William, if it's okay with you and your family, uh, Chief, uh, Chief, I'm sorry. Judge Ed Clawson will uh, swear you in at 8.30 a.m. here at City Hall on Monday, July 1st. Uh, so, counsel, if any of you are available, we will social distance and we will also have masks. But, uh, William, if that will work for you and your family, that's that's when we'll, uh, we'll officially turn the reins over to you. Sure, that will work great. I'm sorry. And July 1st will be on a Wednesday. Okay. And, Jody, did you tell William uh, that – 
he needs to expect phone calls from me like at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, things like that. <laughs> I told him to keep that phone close by. It, he, he may need it. <laughs> keep, keep it charged up. Right. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you both. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. You should have received copies of the uh, city council meeting of June, 20, uh, June 9th, 2020 uh, with city council minutes. Any corrections or changes? Make a motion for approval as submitted. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, six to nine. Next up, we have Mr. Winningham, who's going to uh, give us our financials report uh, ending May 31st of 2020. We do not have uh, our sales tax number yet. Uh, we have possibly taken a look preliminarily at those uh it's not set in stone yet but there is a possibility that we may have taken a, about a 10 percent uh, decrease but as i said that is not in stone yet so uh as soon as i get those numbers i'll i will uh, send that to each of you mr winningham yes sir we're looking at uh, the month of may and as you mentioned the uh, sales tax so far this year has been really good. Um, we've not been down one single month yet. And as you mentioned, we may potentially see our first month down uh, for the month of April, but we were expecting that with uh, most restaurants closed and, and a lot of businesses closed that month. Um, our sales tax for the month of um, May for March sales, <clears throat> excuse me, was up just a little over 3%. Year to date puts us up 6.8%, just under seven. Uh, sales tax continues to be good up to this point, but you can see if you kind of peruse the revenue section there on the general fund that the conditions are affecting our parks revenue. Um, and they are somewhat affecting uh, our permit revenue, you know, by all account, you know, building is still going on in Conway, but, uh, with us working remotely and, and city hall being closed, it is causing a delay in us being able to actually uh, get those funds in our hands but uh, that's not necessarily an indication of, of the building that's going on in town. Um, our bottom line is not real pretty this month. Uh, the reason is we had three payrolls in May, mm -hmm. but it does look better. If you go back and look at May of 2019, uh, the bottom line looks better this year than it did last year. So that's, that's good news for us. Uh, spending in the general funds, we're still under a spending freeze um, under the, uh, 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 direction, Mayor Castleberry, and uh, spending in the general fund and all other departments but admin, we're down 8%, which is a little over a million dollars um, that we've we've spent a little over a million fewer dollars in 2020 uh, at this point than we did in 2019. Um, our other funds, street and sanitation, uh, really kind of the same same stories we had last month there. They've got capital purchases uh, that they're going through and getting done. Um, so they're spending, if you look at it, their spending is up. Our revenues are fairly steady on those two funds. And then our airport, it's, I'd, I'd say maybe more sensitive to uh, the current economic conditions than the street and sanitation funds. Uh, spending is down about 20% in the airport fund and, and I believe our fuel sales are down too. I don't have that exact percentage figure in front of me, but I, I do know that uh, I do believe those sales are down. And I'll just go ahead and, and, and mention um, these, this data is not in your financials, but I did look at our A&P revenue. Uh, this month it was down 23%, which is, <clears throat> in my opinion, it's not bad. I mean, considering most restaurants were closed and you had restaurants that were open, I heard figures thrown out there that their, you know, business was down 60 to 70 percent. Um, I think the drive-through fast food restaurants were, were really busy, have stayed busy through this. Um, so that's, that's the figure there. Year to date for A&P, we're down 6 percent. So that's not too bad, but this is far from over. And when I say this is far from over, of course, I'm referring to the, the COVID-19 effect on the city. Thank you, Mr. Winterham. I 
See, Mr. Ledbetter's uh, got his problem marked out, and he's joining us. Welcome. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Winningham? Okay, Council. I'll, you don't have any questions. Make a motion, Make a motion to approve the monthly financials. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve our monthly financials that ended May 31st of 2020. Any further discussion? Hey, Bart, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I was muted a second ago. If I know, I know you said that that 10% down in April was certainly just a, an estimate or a guesstimate, but yes. if you could tell me today that 10% was all it would be down, I would take that in a heartbeat. So hopefully that's all it will be. Yeah, and then that, like I said, uh, Mr. Grimes, that's, uh, that's not uh, – certified yet so it may yeah. be it may actually be less than that yeah I, i'm like you i was uh, i was really concerned for some some much larger numbers than that, but uh yeah yeah but i agree we'll keep our fingers crossed thank you mm -hmm. Tyler, are you getting any uh guidance out of little rock uh at all on on, on anything in the future uh or, mr uh, hawkins it seems like about every time you hear from them they are sort of um improving their projections um i know when they when this started out and really nobody had any data or or anything at all to go up off of they were predicting you know a three to maybe six percent downturn and then when they really kind of started to see you know some local effect of it they uh, jumped that way up and said well it could be that uh, sales in the state are down 18 to 20 percent and now the last figure I saw, they had backed that off to about 15% is what they were expecting it to be down. And uh, Conway always beats the state average. So, you know, I, I for sure don't think we'll overall be down that much um, and, and hopefully not, of course. Well, it does look like people are, are out and about and shopping in stores and uh, mm -hmm. that, that's a, a, a visual sign that's good. Um, I would like to see more people wear masks, but that's a personal preference of mine. Yeah, I know our building trades have not slowed down at all. We had uh, one, one afternoon, uh, they had 14 permits issued for new construction in Conway in one afternoon. So uh, building is really, really moving right along in the city. Good. All right. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes seven to zero. Next, we have our standing committees. Uh, Mr. Hawkins, we'll turn this portion over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, first item on this portion of the agenda is consideration to approve the nomination of Brent Salter and Raymond Kelly to the Central Business Improvement District number one. Uh, these are both for six-year terms. These uh, nominations were forwarded to us by George Covington. Uh, you have to be a, a property owner in the downtown business district, and you have to be willing to serve. And uh, uh, we have two gentlemen that are two people that are willing to do that, Brent Salter and Raymond Kelly, and I move that uh, we uh, approve them for uh, the downtown central business district. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the nomination of Brent Salter and Raymond Kelly to the Central uh, Business Improvement District for a six-year term. Any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes seven to zero. Mr. Hawkins. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is resolution to amend the 2016 to 2020 consolidated plan and authorize the submission of the plan for the Community Development Block Grant Program. And Kiera, I saw your sign on there a little while ago. Were you there with us? I'm here. There you are. There you are. Welcome. What can you tell us about this? Hi. So this is just a resolution um, to approve the amendment for the 2016-2020 Consolidated Plan with the CARES Act money we have to amend the consolidated plan to be able to accommodate that funding. And so I just need the approval to be able to receive that. So I moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve this resolution uh, to amend the 2016-2020 consolidated plan and authorize the submission of the plan for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Any further discussion? So is this just an accounting 
um, mechanism right now, and then we'll talk about what the money goes towards? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Garrett. This will be resolution R2047. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes seven to zero. Thank you, Kiera. Mr. Hawkins. Next item, Mr. Mayor's resolution to enter in an agreement with Conway Corporation for the Markham Street Jump Start Phase Two project. This is uh, just short of a half a million dollar project, four or four hundred ninety nine thousand. $61 and 23 cents and uh, Conway Corp's going to relocate utilities uh, for that amount of money. And we have a resolution to read for this. It's resolution R2048. Make a motion for the adoption of the resolution. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve this resolution to enter an agreement with Conway Corporation for the Markham Street Jumpstart Project Phase 2. Finley, first of all, how's Isaac doing? He's doing well. Uh, we've been home for a little over a week now, and uh, he's uh, on an adjusted diet, but is gaining weight and, and doing well. I appreciate you asking. Excellent. Wonderful. Excellent. Good. Would you like to just briefly uh, explain to the council what we're doing here? Sure thing. Uh, some of you may remember when we won the uh, grant from Metro Plan for uh, Markham Street, um, there was, uh, the bids came back far lower than we had originally anticipated for phase one. Uh, so much so that we were able to extend that project by a block, um, which was the most that we were able to expand the existing bid, um, but there was still money left over about a half a million dollars. Uh, and uh, rather than let that money go to waste, um, the mayor and I agreed that uh, that we should try to see if we could extend that to Conway Corporation for their use in uh, utility relocation. Uh, and we took that to RDOT and they have agreed uh, to that prospect, but are requiring us to enter an agreement with Conway Corporation since uh, it, the grant was technically granted, to, the funds were technically granted to us rather than Conway Corporation. And that, that, that was the quickest yes I ever got from Brett Carroll, by the way. <laughs> Hi, let it let us give you money. Yeah. Brett, would you like a half million dollars? Yes. <laughs> well, Finley, it's it's been a real pleasure to watch the faster process of Markham Street. The progress has really moved along great since the rest of the utilities have been moved. Yeah, the contractor is doing a good job. <clears throat> and the weather has has really the helped us lately. Helped. It's finally dried up enough where they could work. I okay. make a motion for adoption of the resolution. Uh, so we've, already, we've already done that, Miss Smith. Yeah. I think we're ready to vote. Oh, Mr. I'm missing out. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes seven to zero. Thank you, Finley. Mr. Hawkins. Sir. Oh, Finley. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Finley. I'm sorry. Mr. Hawkins. Okay, very good. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is resolution to approve, approve the low bid for the Donnie Improvement Project Phase 1, Dave Ward Drive to Ada Avenue uh, for the Transportation Department. And uh, Finley, looks like we got a pretty good buy on this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Estimate was at 5.9. We got a bid at 5.5. Five. Yes, sir. We are very happy with this bid and recommend award to the low bidder of Weaver Bailey. I make a motion uh, that we approve this bid. Second. 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 I have a motion and a second to <laughs> approve the resolution for the lowest bid, which goes to Weaver Bailey for phase one of Donaghy Improvement. Any further discussion? This is resolution R2049. Mr. Garrett. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Yes, sir. Mr. Hawkins. Right, Mr. Mayor, is a resolution to enter into a contract to acquire property located at 2111 Tyler Street for the Donaghy Avenue Improvement Project. That's the sidewalk project in that part of town. And uh, we have a resolution to read for this item. Resolution R2050. 
Yeah, and Mr. Hawkins, let me. Uh, that's this twenty eleven Tyler Street. It, it this part is not part of the Donaghy Street improvement. That was a typo on. So, but I'm it sorry. is twenty one eleven. That's all right. Yeah, it, that's, it's, that's my fault. No, no, it wasn't. That's uh, that's how I put it in there. So that's my bad. Anyway, uh, Mr. Finkenbinder, I think you're going to address this. Okay, so this is the last Tyler Street uh, acquisition needed to finish the rest of that sidewalk. This was a, a 279 square foot plot that we were finally able to reach an agreement with the heirs. That'll be that last piece there. It's, folks have been asking about that. So I appreciate it, Mr. Finkenbinder. <clears throat> I make a motion we approve the resolution. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution to acquire the property at 2111 uh, Tyler Street to finish out that project or sidewalks on Tyler Street. Any further discussion? Our questions, Mr. Garrett. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. That's a seven to zero. Mr. Hawkins. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is a resolution to enter into a contract to acquire property at 405 South Donaghy Avenue for the Donaghy Avenue Improvement Project. And uh, we have a resolution to read for this item. It's resolution R2051. Mr. Finkenbinder, would you like to bring the council up to speed? Yeah, so this is on Donaghy phase one. This property is located adjacent to UCA along Donaghy Avenue. It's approximately 8,120 square foot acquisition plus in a permanent easement of 390. So it's a significantly larger piece of land. And Mr. Finkenbinder, if you would, uh, we're talking about these contracts as part of this new process we worked out with the transportation department if you could kind of explain kind of the benefits of entering into these agreements with property owners and um, as to the project and the, and the transportation department yeah so one of the things that, that chuck has put into place on the contracts going forward is a, a right of immediate access built into the contract um, what that's going to do is avoid any delay and the, uh, and the project being able to start, sometimes closing can take a long time. And this way the, the transportation doesn't have to wait um, on that process. Chuck has that built into the contracts now, which is a, a huge step forward. Um, and then the other reason why we, we push to reach an agreement wherever possible is that litigation is expensive. It's, it's expensive for the city. And as we're learning, it can be extremely time consuming once a lawsuit is filed. In a condemnation case, um, we have to wait on a judge to grant that access. And so wherever possible, we, we try to reach an agreement. In fact, the first 12 properties of the Donaghy phase one, 12 properties that, the, that we've been working on, we've got agreements on all but one. And we're still negotiating on that last one. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pinkett, Bob. I make a, a motion for adoption of the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution to enter into an agreement with uh, to acquire property located at 405 South Donaghy for this Donaghy Avenue improvement uh, project. Any, any further questions, Mr. Finkenbinder? Mr. Garrett. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Seven to zero. Mr. Hawkins. <clears throat> Next item, Mr. Mayor, is a resolution to enter into a contract to acquire property at 518 Donaghy Avenue for the Donaghy Avenue Improvement uh, Project. And we have a resolution to be read for this one. It's resolution R2052. Same thing, Mr. Finkenbinder, just uh, part of what we're doing on Donaghy Avenue. Yes, yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is, uh, for point of reference, this is going to be a part of the uh, large roundabout that's going to go in at Donaghy and College. Uh, this particular property is owned by the Liblong family, and uh, this is going to, the acquisition here is to not only put in the sidewalk, but widen the road to accommodate that roundabout. That's going to be one busy roundabout. It will, but uh, in talking to the property owners, and one of the things that, that Chuck and I stress is to meet with property owners wherever possible at the, at the property um, and kind of see, listen to their to any concerns that they might have, but also be able to show them how the effect of this uh, project is going to be. And, and I think in looking at these plans and talking to the folks, they're real excited about the, the roundabout going in. 
And I know that Mr. Benson went out and visited with some of the property owners out there too. And they were very pleased with you and Chuck and uh, Finley for coming out and explaining things to them. That's a great place for a roundabout. It's going to help us with a lot of traffic congestion. Well, and specifically a couple of property owners have also specifically mentioned Philip Vick with the yes. transportation department. They're very pleased with the work that he's done. And uh, several of them have, have remarked to me that he's, he's left a positive view of the city uh, on that. That's great. I make a motion for adoption. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution to acquire the property at 518 Donaghy. Uh, another, I'm sorry, yeah, five for the Donaghy Avenue Improvement Project. Any mm -hmm. further discussion? Mr. Garrett. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes okay, seven to zero. Thank you, Mr. Finkenbinder. Mr. Hawkins. Item, Mr. Mayor, is an ordinance to accept annexation of some property, about almost six acres of land, 5.99 acres, located south of Ronnie Lane, which is over near uh, uh, Baptist Hospital. Mm -hmm. And we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's Ordinance 020-32. 32. 32. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. I have a motion and a second to waive the three readings. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes seven to zero. Make a motion for the adoption of the ordinance. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Mr. Walden, would you like to uh, brief the folks at home, kind of something, keep up what's going on with us? Yes. Uh, citizens at large like to hear you speak. All right. Um, this annexation, as Mr. Hawkins said, is just south of the Baptist Hospital, just north of Lake Conway. Um, the property is parceled together with an additional property that Mr. Thornton owns. Uh, they're seeking to annex it in uh, as A1, which is uh, agricultural. Uh, the property has not yet been, been platted, so uh, once it's brought in, uh, it will be brought in with agricultural zoning uh, and uh, to develop the property, uh, Mr. Thornton will have to plat the property and also go through the development review process and likely rezone the property as well. So um, essentially what this action is doing is the, the first step of a long part of a process to be able to get, get to where it is developed. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Former council member Chris Thornton has been patiently waiting. I don't know whether he would like to say something at this time or not. Uh, Mr. Thornton, would you like to say something about this? Or are you good? I'm doing a fine job. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> no better land than Conway land. <laughs> I see Bobby French and Julie Kaler's on there too. Mm -hmm. Okay, council, for no further discussion, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Hawkins. Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Pruitt? Sorry, aye. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Pass is seven to zero. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very Mr. much. Hawkins. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Mr. Hawkins? Stick around, James. You got some more to talk about. First of all, an ordinance zone property at 1606 South Boulevard. Uh, the current zoning on it is R2A. They're requesting an R2 zoning on it. Um, Planning Commission heard this at their June 15th, 2020 meeting and voted unanimously to send this to City Council with a recommendation of approval. And we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's Ordinance 02033. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion and a second to waive the three readings. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes seven to zero. I make a motion for adoption of the ordinance. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Uh, Mr. Walden. Yeah, the property is at the northwest corner of uh, South Boulevard and, and Center Street. Uh, the lot uh, property is approximately uh, about 7,400, 7,500 square feet uh, in that range. 
Um, the effect of the, the rezone going from R2A to R2, uh, a duplex is currently permitted by right on the lot. However, the lot is not large enough to accommodate a duplex. Uh, and so by going to the R2 zoning, uh, it would, uh, in essence, allow uh, the, a lot, the lot size to be established would actually meet the minimum lot size requirements for a duplex. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird, tricky area. On the comprehensive plan, the plan indicates zoning for this area as single family, uh, and it is surrounded by uh, zoning. There is some S1 zoning uh, across the street. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Walden. Mayor. Yes, sir. I do have some, some concerns about this rezoning. I talked to James earlier today. Uh, you've heard me talk about this before, but this is one of those areas where this, this could be the first domino to fall for a duplex. Uh, I drove by there today and it's still a very viable part of old Conway. I drove the entire block a couple of times and did locate one other duplex that seemed to be there for quite some time, looks like decades probably. Most of the homes are older, but seem to be well kept. And, you know, I think the R2A zoning predates all of us, maybe probably even you, Mr. Hawkins. It, does. it was put in, <laughs> it was put in, it was put in to- <laughs> When I had dark hair. <laughs> exactly. The R2A, my understanding was to keep duplexes from going into lots that were too small to accommodate them and the 10, I believe the minimum is 10,000 square foot and this lot, you know, it's not, not really close at 7,500 square feet. And, and while probably not the worst thing in the world that could happen there, I just hate to see that be the first one. And then next thing you know, the neighbor wants one and the neighbor wants one. And then all these homes are gone and you've got duplexes, which went against the R2A spirit in the beginning. No, that's a very good point, Mr. Grimes. I appreciate you driving around and, uh, and taking a look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen that happen in other parts of the city. And I think the, uh, you know, it, it, we, I think we've, I don't know, it, it's, we've seen other parts of the city where doing this hasn't ended up with the best result. Uh, not to say that it wouldn't be different here, but I just think history has shown us that sometimes it doesn't end up the way we hoped it would be. So with that, I, I do plan to vote against this, say, having said that. Okay. Uh, any of the property owners online with us? Yes, sir. Thank you, Council. This is Julie Kaler speaking. Um, I hope to assuage the concerns expressed today by informing the Council that we have support from both adjoining neighbors as well as from Central Baptist College property management team. Um, and our plans for the resulting uh, duplex of townhomes would absolutely adhere to all of historic Conway's design standards and would not greatly exceed the current footprint of the structure. So while I absolutely understand the concern for that domino effect, um, we have support from our neighboring uh, property owners that this is going to be a lovely development for our area. Not only are my husband and I property owners of this um, this area, we are also uh, residents of this area, as well as this particular property being in our family for over 30 years. So we are greatly committed to the integrity of this area and going through all the appropriate steps to ensure that. Thank you all for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Keller. Thank you. Okay, Council. Uh, we have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance to rezone the property. Uh, any further discussion? And I think I used incorrect grammar a while ago when I said, is anyone the property owners out <laughs> here? If my wife's listening, listen, that was a slip of the tongue. I, I mean, I, never mind. Anyway, Mr. Garrett, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Lippert. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. 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 Miss Mel. No. Mr. Grimes? No. Mr. Hawkins? No. Oh. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Pruitt? No. Okay, that was a, we had three yeses and four noes, so that failed to pass. Okay. That fails three to four. Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Kater, if you would contact uh, Mr. Walden and uh, 
see if there's uh, maybe another route you can go and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Mr. Hawkins. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is an ordinance to rezone property at 645 Diane Lane. It currently is zoned 01. The requested zoning is R1. Uh, this was reviewed by the Planning Commission at their June 15th meeting this year. And at that time, a unanimous nine nothing vote was taken and forward with a request to forward this city council with a recommendation of approval. We have an ordinance to read for this item. It's ordinance 0 2034. Make a motion to waive the three readings. Second. We have a motion and a second to waive the three readings. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes seven to zero. Make a motion for adoption. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Uh, Mr. Walden. Uh, so this property is at the end of Diane Lane, just west of uh, New Life Church. Um, the story with this property is that, that sometimes um, we annex things and in deference to the property owner, we uh, end up creating some, some issues down the road. Uh, so this property was part of a much larger parcel that was annexed in uh, as O1 property. Um, one of the, the strange, uh, I, I guess you'd say, coincidence, or not a coincidence, but factors in that O1 zoning is that it prohibits uh, single family residential. Uh, and so while that, that property, you know, at one time probably would have been uh, useful uh, as office, uh, office zoning, uh, the way in which it has developed, particularly to the south, it's it's a much more residential context now. Uh, and so we had uh, Ms. Hambeacon approach us about developing the property uh, for a single family residence. And lo and behold, uh, though there are single family residences to the south, uh, that that use is not, per not permitted in that zone. Um, so uh, the R1 zoning was the uh, sort of a, I guess most restrictive zone that would enable her to do uh, what she's wanting to do with the property. And so we recommended uh, they uh, rezone the property to R1. That's a kind of a long story long. Thank you, Mr. Walden. Okay, council, we have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance to rezone the property located at 645 Diane Lane from O1 to R1. Any other questions or discussion from Mr. Walden? Mr. Garrett. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Pruitt. Aye. Ms. Mel. Aye. Ms. Isby. Yes. Mr. Hawkins. Yes. Mr. Ledbetter. Yes. Mr. Grimes. Aye. Passes seven to zero. And I think this is the last time, Mr. Hawkins. It looks like you had it all tonight. And, oh, I hate that. <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate you did that to me, too. But I do have all of it, and this is the last item. And James, you're going to get to tell us some more stuff here in a minute. It's an ordinance to amend the sign ordinance regarding automobile service station signs for the planning and zoning department, or planning and development department. And we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's ordinance 02035. Make a motion that we waive the three readings. Second. I have a motion and a second to waive the three readings. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes seven to zero. Uh, so this amendment to the, the sign ordinance, uh, we were contacted uh, regarding uh, LED fuel price signs. So those, those portions of you'll see of an interstate sign or freestanding sign uh, that essentially lists uh, the price of, of fuel. Uh, the way that the ordinance is, is currently constructed, um, those LED fuel price uh, indicators are only permitted within a thousand feet of the I-40, uh, what we call the, the interstate sign zone. Um, when we were contacted, the question was raised, um, you know, is there a particular reason why we would not permit those types of signs elsewhere in the city? Uh, as staff, uh, we didn't really see that there necessarily was 
a strong reason why you would be permitted to do that along the interstate and not uh, in the rest of the city. So in approaching this, um, when I wrote this ordinance change, um, wanted to, a, a couple factors were, were key in, in looking at this. One, I wanted to tie the, the sign permissions to the activity that was on the site. Um, so rather than it being a descriptor of an LED fuel price sign, uh, we've moved to where the signs are permitted if um, a, a, basically a monochromatic um, static sign that displays numeric characters are permitted for uh, an automobile service station. So someone that, that sells uh, retail motor fuel. And essentially the way that, that it's constructed in the ordinance is the only thing that would be possible or logical for an individual to display on one of those signs would be fuel prices but because it only displays numeric characters. Uh, additionally, in looking at that, I noticed that the way we had it uh, currently written that on the LED fuel price sign, it didn't necessarily cap how large it could be. So the, the entirety of an LED fuel price could actually replace all of a, a freestanding uh, freestanding sign. And so which you you normally say, well, that, that nobody's ever going to do that. But I've actually uh, seen in some other communities in the state where a, a very large uh, retailer has actually done that. Um, uh, and so that that was something that is a bit of a concern. So what the effect of this does is it it restructures the way that those are set. That's a, a maximum size limit for what they can be. And then it additionally um, uh, allows it within um, those places where an automobile service station is permitted outside of the interstate sign zone. So it allows it, it allows it citywide. And well, so what this does is what this does not do, it does not allow the, the flashing signs and the whatnot. It's basically, mm -hmm. I think he's put an hour time frame on there and that uh, that's the typeface cannot change more than once per hour. So that pretty much excludes any kind of flashing message signs, which, which is kind of the intent of the entire deal to start with. Mm -hmm. Well, James and I talked about this earlier today and I know of one business owner who, well, it, it's Dr. Barnes who owns the, um, the old Ryan's location. And he's approached us a couple different times about what he could do because that's considered an interstate sign. So here we're saying if you're a gas station, you can have a lighted sign like this, but if you're an optical provider, you can't. So my concern is that we're just singling out one industry. Well, I think we can probably address whatever concerns he might have separately. He, um, he's tried, he's tried. And it's pretty much take it down or put it back up with just a flat, nothing else. And so when I saw this come up, I thought, well, that's not really fair to him. That's so good that, that's my concern that this is a very narrow and, and we've not really talked about it as a council. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fair concern. I do because I, I, I had visited with Dr. Timer to myself. Um, Mayor, can we table it until we're back together next month? Yes. Uh, James, does that cause any problems? No, absolutely not. I would like to, uh, I know that signs are a big issue. I know that, uh, I know that uh, y'all wrestled that a lot of times, uh, well before I got, uh, got get, been, been in the office and, uh, there's been a lot of questions about it since then in the last four years. So, uh, maybe it's time we take a look at it and, uh, and figure out if we need to make any changes at all or, or leave it as is, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay with tabling it, uh, so Maybe might, schedule a committee meeting or something on it where we mm -hmm. can all have time to yeah. discuss it. Okay. Yep. I, I make a motion to table it and bring it back uh, sometime in July when we get back together. In, in second. Okay. Yeah. Have a motion second, and a second. second. Okay. Have a motion and a second to uh, table this amendment to the signed ordinance. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Okay, seven to zero. James, if you would, uh, would you put some packets together for the council? And uh, Shelly, you might want to visit with the doctor and, and get him to uh, send us some diagrams. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I'll 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 reach out to him and make sure and make sure he gets in touch touch with James again. Okay, good. Excellent. I, right. I guess I would have uh, one question. Um, from certainly, I'm not not a lawyer, but I do have some level of experience in in writing side ordinances. There are a, a few additional things that I I have concerns about. Is that something y'all would like me to enumerate? Yep. Yes. 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 Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, this, let's, let's a, this, this do is a the thorough time. review. All right. Excellent. Good deal. Well, Mr. Hawkins, good job tonight. Man, you made hey, my job easy. I did what I could, Mr. Mayor. Um, as long as the council is okay with it, uh, as long as our numbers uh, are somewhat creeping up in the state, if it's okay with you, we will continue to meet uh, via Zoom. Uh, like you, I'm ready to, to meet back here too. But uh, until we start seeing a decline in our numbers, I think I think we're handling business okay from here. If that's all right with all of y'all. Mm -hmm. All good. right. With that, I I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 I don't think anybody's opposed. We're adjourned. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>